To cancel or not to cancel, that's the question voters in Canada are facing about Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. After Time magazine published a photo last night of him wearing brown face during an Arabian Nights-themed school event in 2001. I take responsibility for my uh, decision to do that. I shouldn't have done it. I should have known better. Uh, it was something that uh, I didn't think was racist at the time, but now I recognize um, it was something racist to do, and I am deeply sorry. Trudeau also admitted to another incident where he wore blackface in a high school talent show. Now a Canadian news outlet has published a video that they say shows a third instance of him wearing racist makeup from some time in the early 90s. Scandals prompted comparisons to Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, who first apologized for wearing blackface in this yearbook photo and then later denied it was him to begin with. And despite widespread calls for his resignation at the time, Northam was not canceled. He remains in office. But with Canadian elections just a month away, it'll be the voters who decide Trudeau's fate. Of course, this is just the latest example of bad behavior leading to possible cancellation, as they say. Comedian Shane Gillis was fired from Saturday Night Live this week, just days after he was hired, after videos of him making racist, sexist, homophobic jokes popped up on social media. Since then, several comedians have come to his defense. Well, this is just cancel culture. The guy shouldn't have been fired. It's just a couple of things back in his history. We're going to go through everyone's history. Are we? Or was Boston Globe columnist Renee Graham right when she said it's not cancel culture, it's just facing consequences? Joining me now is another Boston Globe columnist who has a thought or two on the subject, Janae Osterheld. It's great to see you again, Janae. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Along with comedian and writer Nell Scavell, the co-author of Facebook exec Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In, her memoir is just the funny parts. Nell, it's great to see you again. So nice to be Are here. Are we living in a cancel culture, or is it simply that those who've been canceled want us to think we are? Do you, do you know what I mean? Well, if we were living in a cancel culture, would we have a sexual predator in the White House and two on the Supreme Court? <laughs> well, maybe it just doesn't apply to everybody. I mean, isn't that part of the thing? It, is, it appears to be right. applied to people because in you, different sorts of ways. Right. Ooh, an SNL cast member lost his job. I think his sin was he wasn't as big as Dave Chappelle, who got away with much worse in his stand-up routine. Most recent thing about Michael Jackson and the LGBTQ yeah. community. And that sort of, if there is a cancel culture, when did it start? Uh, it, it seems to me, it, it, my analysis is, it just was a natural reaction to the no consequence, uh, no cancel culture that we lived in forever. I guess I just have a problem with us calling people paying for their uh, crimes and mishaps cancel culture. Um, when I think about cancel culture, I think of Janet Jackson or Colin Kaepernick or the Black Panther Party. I don't think about <clears throat> these men out here who are raping people in their their public you know everybody's woke when the world is watching <laughs> and at their party private parties let's remember trudeau is not i think when we get caught up in the headline it's like at a school party as a teacher as a 29 year old mm -hmm. he's not a little boy that is absolutely yeah, correct he's not a little boy and I'm a brown person. What brown people look like this with, with all of this? It's just offense. It's a very offensive thing. And to put all of that on and look at yourself in a mirror and not understand that you look like something other than human is questionable. I was going to get to the show later, but since you brought it up, we just played an apology. And I mentioned to you both for one on the air on our radio show, talk about apologies at all, a lot. If one believes that what Justin Trudeau said was sincere and not, I just apologize because I was caught, does that matter or, or does it not? I think it matters, but I also think it matters that he has done this three times. This wasn't a one-off. Um, I, I think a lot of things, context matters, so I'm not going to... There's cancel culture, which I don't think is what is happening to Trudeau or what has happened, definitely did not happen to Spicer. Um, or he was on Dancing with the Stars, for those who don't know, after his deceitful performance as the press secretary of the president. Like, these are, that's not cancel culture. This, like, people are using the word wrong. The people who have been canceled is like Blasey Ford. She's been canceled. Or, right. or Ashley Judd, who, you know, was in retaliation against her. Harvey Weinstein told Peter Jackson not to hire her on Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I want to talk about what 
preceded whatever we're in, whether this is cancel culture or cancel culture is really as you're describing. I was thinking about you this afternoon when I knew you were coming here, and I may get some of these facts wrong, but I don't think I'm going to get most of the facts wrong. You're either the second or third writer for David Letterman, right? We're, second female, female writer. writer. Female writer. First okay. to us and his girlfriend. Okay, so, <laughs> well, so, and then there is a whole, you wrote a piece yeah. a decade or so ago I, exactly about this years. hostile, sexually charged environment, yeah. and rather than the guy who caused it, David Letterman, being canceled, if I may use the word in this context, you canceled yourself. And the, but I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. But that was the way it was for a long time, was it not? Since the big boy in will not be canceled, right. you have a choice whether to endure or just cancel yourself, no? Yes, and you know, it's interesting to hear Trudeau say, I take responsibility because that's meaningless. You, you have to make amends. And he went on in the apology to say he would be working even harder to be more inclusive. And his cabinet has been very inclusive, especially for women. And um, it is interesting that Letterman is now making these shows for Netflix and has hired a production company that's mainly female. Uh -huh. So I believe in the um, power of redemption. Too. I, that's why I don't like real. cancel culture. If it's real. Yeah. I mean, let, let's do, Shane Gillis is obviously a, a, a yeah. huge story. Who? I kind of tell a lie. Well, I, never heard, that's, I was going to say, I never heard of the guy until he was hired. And then he, he was uh, fired because all this stuff came to light, which, by the way, was quite recently. Andrew Yang, who actually was yeah. the target of some of the racist remarks by Gillis, was on our radio show the other day on Monday. Here's what Yang had to say. These remarks are... Uh, offensive and hurtful, but I do not think he should lose his job over them. Uh, I think as a society, we've become excessively punitive and vindictive when people make statements that others find distasteful and that we're better served by uh, putting people in position to learn. And that starts with a degree of forgiveness. Does that do anything for you or nothing? He's well in his rights to forgive someone who who hurt him. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think there's something to be said about us being vindictive and petty. I don't think it applies to this particular situation. He just said those remarks. Like, it, it goes back to what I said. Everyone's woke when the world is watching. Mm. Everyone wants to do better when they get caught. This, there's multiple examples of him behaving this way, and it wasn't like 10 years ago either. It was a few months ago. Like <laughs> well, but there wasn't even really an apology. At least my sense was the, the, the thing that was at, the, where there was an attempt to protect, rehabilitate, whatever the verb is, Gillis was, he's a comic. I mean, different rules apply to comedians was the theory that went there. You're making a face. Well, I, it's Michael Richards did this mm -hmm. years ago. Where was the punchline? I mean, being mean, punching down is not inherently funny unless you have hate towards that person. So... See, you know, it, it, but there is a sliding scale from clueless to criminal. That part, well, but that not, part, there's context. Like, yeah, they, I'm not saying like I just don't think there could be a blanket comedian pass. Like, I think there's comedians who can who have context and, and know what they're doing. I think that there's just being mean. And, well, there also know, shouldn't be a blanket life sentence in my estimation. When no. Matt Damon said what he said, admittedly his timing was horrible. After the Me Too thing started, he was excoriated for how dare you say their degrees. But there are degrees of misbehaving, and there should be degrees of consequences. It shouldn't just be zero to cancel. I, I, I'm right about that, am I not? I agree with that. Okay, so can we return to your example, by the way? I want to talk about a couple of people who are not canceled, if I may. Here are a couple of women who probably think that one of them should have been. Here they are. He turned to me and um, embraced me and gave me a kiss on the lips. And I, I remember being shocked. The person on my right put their hand up my skirt. He did touch my vagina through my underwear. It was a real shock when all of a sudden his hands were all over me. When he started putting his hand up my skirt, and that was it. That was it. So they were just two or three of 24, I think, uh, to be as bipartisan as possible. There were four women who, in my opinion, incredibly accused Bill Clinton of some pretty horrible behavior, including rape in one context. Why did they escape consequences and so far? I mean, Bill Clinton apparently has, and obviously this guy uh, escaped those consequences, Donald Trump. Why did they escape? Well, it is catching up 
to them, or, or to Bill Clinton. I think Monica Lewinsky has written some very uh, powerful pieces ab about not understanding the power differential back then. I, I was I, at a Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton event about three months ago. I went because I was curious to see. Yeah. There were thousands of people who cheered every single word that came out of his mouth, and most of the crowd was women, for whatever that's uh, worse, worth. So, I mean, why do you think that, I mean, let's assume, take Nell's argument that maybe Clinton didn't totally survive, but so far Donald Trump seems to be surviving quite well. Why? There's a few things at play. Part of it is us catching up. Like when you talk about Clinton, part of it is us catching up. Like we, we are just catching up to protecting women and for <laughs> recognizing women are humans. <laughs> um, so part of it is that when you talk about certain powerful people. And then with Trump, there are people, including white women, who will always choose their race and the privilege of their race over their gender. And I think there is such a, a large dynamic of people who want power that they're willing to continue to, to hold him up. That's a pretty good moral, I think, or takeaway yeah, from this whole story. Do you have a takeaway from current events around these issues? Or? No, I just I was thinking the other day, we have cancel culture and rape culture. If we could put them together and make cancel rape culture, <laughs> that would be the best. But I'm bummed. Thank you very much. Now it's great to see you oh, again. Nice Thanks so much, Janae. Great to see you as well. Thank you. Really appreciate your time.